up? What's going on guys? It's Ethan Fairbanks and today I'm going to be showing you guys everything that I do and everything that I have done to put on as much muscle mass as possible. Now I've been training for about four years now and I feel like I have a pretty good idea on how to efficiently put on as much muscle as you possibly can without wasting any time. And now these are all based on personal experiences. I'm not a certified trainer, but it's four years of experience and I'm telling you guys, I know what I'm talking about and these are the things that I've done to put on the muscle that I've put on. So the first thing I want to talk about is consistency. Now, the reason I want to talk about this first is because, in my opinion, it's definitely one of the most important things that you can do when training. So the reason I say this is because a lot of people train for a week to a month and they don't really see that much results, so they just stop. That's not what you need to do at all. What you need to do is if you're training for a month and you don't see any progress, you need to evaluate what you're doing wrong, okay? So it could be simple program, it could be a lot of things, but just don't get frustrated. This stuff takes time and just stay consistent because I'm telling you guys, it is literally not possible for you guys to go to the gym every single day for months on end and not see any results. That's unless you have some form of muscle deficiency that you've been diagnosed with, it's just not possible, okay? So make sure you're staying consistent, make sure you're going to the gym, don't give up, because I didn't and I'm here today. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is intensity and volume. When training, you need to make sure that you have a high intensity at all times. You're not gonna get jacked and you're not gonna put on a lot of muscle mass by just simply going to the gym and just kinda half-assing it. You need to make sure that you're going to the gym, you're not talking to anybody, and you just put your headphones on or do whatever you need to do to get in the zone and just work, okay? It's not a place to mess around, it's not a place to just kinda do whatever you want and have fun, okay? We wanna have fun, but we also wanna do it as intense as possible so that way you're not wasting your time. Another thing is the volume. You want the volume to be pretty high, okay? When you're bodybuilding and you're really trying to put on size, you wanna do as many reps and sets as possible. So that's what I mean by volume. So you don't wanna go in and do like 20, 20 sets of like 10 reps. No, I'm not saying anything like that. I'm saying keep the sets within a three to four range. Sometimes you can go five and then keep the reps anywhere from eight to probably 15, okay? That's where I would keep it. For your compound movements, you can go a little bit under that and that's where you'd implicate, you know, eight reps and then 10 reps as well. But for your accessories, you need to make sure that you're doing higher reps, so that's where the 10 to 15 reps come in. And by compound movements, I mean your bench squat and deadlift, and by accessory movements, I mean things like curls, things like your ordinary dumbbell free weight movements. Well, another super important thing that you wanna keep in mind when training is time under tension. Now, what I mean by this is the amount of time it takes you to perform a single rep. There's no magic number for how long you need to perform a rep or a perform a set, okay? But what I'm telling you right off the bat is you need to keep a few things in mind. You need to keep it slow. You need to make sure that you're utilizing your mind to muscle connection. Now what that is, is it's just feeling the muscle. You need to feel the muscle contract. So go in and then expand. So pull out. So those are the eccentric and eccentric movements. And you need to keep that in mind as well as you need to make sure you're constantly checking your form. Even if you're a pro bodybuilder, you're still checking your form. You're still doing everything you can to constantly make sure that you are engaging in that muscle because you want that, that muscle. So say I'm training chest, you want your chest to be under constant tension throughout the entire movement. And the muscle's gonna grow by crunching in on those muscle fibers and expanding out. So you're crunching and pulling them. And those, what that's doing is it's breaking down those muscle fibers. So that way, later on after your workout, when you're eating, and then once you go to bed, your muscles will, your muscle fibers will build up again and then they'll come back even stronger. Another really good thing to do when trying to put on muscle is changing up your tempos, okay? So when you're doing certain movements, um, your body can get used to them pretty easily. So a good way to kind of shock your muscle and give it something that it's not expecting is to change up the tempo. So say that you're doing bench press and 
your normal tempo is, you know, up, down, up, down, up, down. Well, what you can do is you can take longer when pressing and then longer when coming down on the decentric movement. So sometimes you can take two seconds to perform a rep and then other times you might want to take four seconds to perform a rep. Just constantly change it so that way you can shock your muscle and just honestly hit it with something that it's not expecting because that's gonna help you break down those muscle fibers even more. So something that I use a lot while training is progressive overload. Now, there's a lot of different ways to go about this, but the way that I like to do it is I like to think about the weight as a scale, okay? So think about it as a scale, and the difficulty, it's a difficulty scale from one to 10, okay? Now, one being, oh, that was super easy, that was literally featherweight. 10 being, okay, I definitely could not have done a single rep after that, okay? So, you wanna keep your difficulty range in an area of probably around seven to 10 for almost every set, okay? Compound movements, you really, really wanna make sure that you're going higher on the scale. And then accessory movements, not, not as much, but make sure that you are hitting a couple sets throughout each workout where you are going to exhaustion, so 10. The thing you wanna watch out for when you're trying to utilize progressive overload is ego lifting. You don't wanna ego lift, okay? Now what I mean by this is you don't want to do a weight that you can't do. A weight that you can't do is a weight that causes you to sacrifice your form, okay? You don't wanna sacrifice your form. You want every single rep to be as perfect as possible, like I said before. And if you're going too heavy, it's not gonna be it's not gonna be good form and you're not gonna be able to utilize that time under tension at all, which is, you know, you don't wanna do that. You're gonna lose gains and you're gonna lose muscle mass. So dieting. Dieting is a big, big, big factor when trying to put on size. Now, the best way to put on size, and almost the only way to put on size when dieting, is through a caloric surplus. Now, what this means is you're pretty much consuming more calories than you're burning. So, if your caloric expenditure, the amount of calories you burn is say, 2,400 calories in a day, then you wanna be eating probably anywhere from 600 to 800 calories more than that. So you wanna be any, eating anywhere from 3,000 to 3,200 calories a day. Another thing is you wanna make sure that you're consuming carbs throughout your day, okay? Now I'm not saying get an insane amount of carbs or anything like that. I'm saying that you need your carbs to work out. So what I would recommend doing is getting your carbs in before your workout. So that way you have loads of energy to work and carbs are the best source of energy that you can possibly consume. So what I like to do is I like to overload on carbs right before a workout. And I do that so that way I can feel great and I can have the energy I need to work out, which, you know, it's just kind of common sense. You need energy to burn energy, so eat your carb. So when it comes to protein, there's honestly tons of different forms of protein, so I can't go through all of them, but I'm telling you right now, that you wanna to stick to about half a gram of protein per pound of body weight, okay? So if you weigh 100 pounds, then you need to be consuming 50 grams of protein just to keep it simple, okay? Now, I also highly recommend getting your casein protein in right before bed, okay? So some good examples of casein protein would be almost anything dairy, honestly. So. I really like to get yogurt in before bed, yogurt and milk. So typically what I'll do is I'll make one of those shakes that I've made in my previous videos, that blueberry smoothie, and I'll make that right before bed and then it's filled with casein protein so the casein protein can digest throughout the night. It's, a, it's the best form of protein that you can get before you go to bed. Also guys, make sure that when you're eating all this food, you're doing it clean, okay? Now I know a lot of people say that they can get away with dirty bulking and all that kind of stuff, but to be honest, there's gonna be a point where you can't do that anymore, okay? You're gonna hit a point where all that dirty food is gonna turn into fat, not muscle, okay? So it's better to just, to just develop the habits early on and that way that when you do hit that point, you don't even have to change the way you eat. All you have to do 
is just keep doing what you're doing, which to me sounds a lot better than just hitting a wall one day and then being like, oh my God, why do I weigh like 30 more pounds than normal and it's all fat, okay? So I would highly recommend eating clean. And then also when you eat clean, you feel so much better, I'm telling you. If you eat dirty, you won't even notice it, okay? But once you eat clean, and then try to eat like fast food or something after eating clean for so long you will feel like complete and utter garbage okay like fast food and processed food is just not good for you and it's not optimal for muscle gain at all and you definitely need to just eat clean and do it the right way also make sure you guys are getting enough sleep okay sleep is one of the most important things that you can do when trying to put on size because you need sleep to regain all that muscle that you just pretty much shredded, okay? And I recommend definitely getting anywhere from seven to eight hours if you're lifting hard consistently. I get eight hours every night or try to, um, and I, I honestly feel like I can't really perform if I don't. So I really, 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 really do recommend trying to get eight hours of sleep if you can. Drink your water, ladies and gentlemen. I'm telling you. You do not want to be dehydrated. When you are dehydrated, you do not perform well at all, okay? And if you don't perform well at all, then you're not going to be putting on as much muscle as you possibly can. So I typically try to get about a gallon of water in every day, or at least close. And then another really good way to get that water in is to right away when you wake up in the morning, okay, right away, have it sitting on, like, on your headboard or right next to you or whatever you can, and try and chug a liter of water right when you wake up it sounds difficult but it's not at all because you haven't drank water in that eight hours that you just slept okay so right away in the morning a liter of water okay try to at least you know you might not be able to right away but eventually you will and another thing is that when you drink water you're gonna be able to eat more food okay and the reason that that is is because when you're drinking water, you're expanding your stomach. Well, when you expand your stomach, your stomach obviously stays expanded, and then water goes right through your system, so you're just pissing it all right out. So definitely drink water if you're trying to eat more and gain weight, and then also gain muscle. I feel like a lot of people struggle with their rest days, and now what I mean by this is a lot of people fall off on their rest days, okay? So what I like to do is I like to keep active rest days in, and what this means is I like to do something active on my rest days. I don't go out and just push my body to the limits like I do throughout the week, but I try to do something, you know, that's a little bit more active than usual. Okay. Also, do not fall off your diet. I can't I cannot stress that enough, okay? Don't fall off your diet because one day is so important, okay? One day is extremely important when it comes to a diet because um, one day can completely reset you. Like for me, I'm extremely skinny. So when I, and my metabolism is extremely high. So when I eat very low amounts of food on the weekend or on Sunday, then I can lose up to five pounds, maybe even more sometimes. It's crazy. I don't know how, it's just how my body is. So make sure that you're not falling off your diet on your rest days. You can have a cheat meal, or maybe two, I would try not to do two, but you can have, you can definitely have a cheat meal on, on weekends, but don't go, don't go overboard with it. Okay, so the last thing I wanna talk about is proper programming. Now, this is extremely important when it comes to putting on size, okay? And I personally love the push-pull split workouts, and I'm definitely gonna be doing a video on that sometime in the near future. So make sure you're on the lookout for that, but um, definitely run push, pull, legs, split. And pretty much what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow you to work each muscle group twice a week, okay? And that is exactly what you wanna do. You do not wanna work each muscle group once a week, okay? That's, you're gonna be getting the bare minimum of muscle growth. You wanna make sure you're at least getting two workouts in for each muscle group every single week. This same muscle repair takes anywhere from 24 to 36 hours after a workout. So if you're only training once a week, you your muscles have been recovered for like how many days and you didn't even do anything about it. So when you're training every 
you know couple of days that same muscle group then you're pushing it to the limit and you're utilizing as much time as you have to put on as much muscle as you can also i highly recommend you switch your programming every 8 to 12 weeks okay and the reason being is because like i mentioned earlier in the video your muscles get used to these movements and used to these workouts extremely fast so number one thing shock the muscle okay you want to shock the crap out of it and to shock the muscle if your muscles are getting used to it you need to switch your programming after 8 to 12 weeks okay so definitely keep that in mind when training and um, you just don't want to hit that plateau you don't want to hit that area where you're not making any gains or anything like that at all so that's why you switch your programming every 8 to 12 weeks all right that's going to wrap up today's video i really hope you guys enjoyed and if you did make sure you guys smash that like button make sure you guys also check my instagram out the link will be in the description so go check that out right now follow me if you haven't already Make sure you guys hit the notification bell. That way you guys can stay up to date with every single video I post. And also subscribe if you haven't already. Because every single sub helps me out a lot. And I love making content for you guys. And I want to keep doing it. So subscribe right now. And it's been real. It's Ethan Fairbanks. Love you guys. Peace out.